So this video is the beginning of a new series of talks I'm going to do. It's going to be a playlist on my channel. I'm going to call it Art Analysis, which will simply be a group of videos discussing art I'm enthusiastic about, but from not only just from a point of view of just saying, hey, I like this, which I'm going to have a separate uh, you know, cha um, playlist called Great Artists. But for this one, Art Analysis, what I want to do is actually choose a piece of work that I think is just great and try to break it down and demonstrate the analytical mindset that I use and that I think any skilled artist uses. The thing to realize though is that, this is my theory, is that some artists do it unconsciously. In other words, they learn how to climb Art Mountain incredibly well, but they don't really, for whatever reason, explain it to themselves. And I'm not particularly criticizing that, but I'm saying that for other people, it's good to actually loop back and understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And at the start, I should mention, of course, that there's a kind of danger to this because you can too easily get into a theoretical mindset where you just have a whole bunch of theories, but you can't actually do it. So what I would say is that there's a time and place for emotion and just drawing and creating unfettered and there's a time for stepping over and analyzing either other people's works so looking at people whose work you admire and trying to kind of break it down and understand what they're doing or even doing that to yourself because the more you are able to do that you can make better choices you can you can have a tool that's in your head either later if you find you're struggling with a drawing and you, you want to kind of find the way to move forward and not take a wrong step and make it even worse. Um, yeah, if you have that tool, then, then that's something you can use because of course it's all about decisions and choices. So here I'm going to talk about uh, Batman Year One and uh, David Mazzuccelli and the set page two, which is really sort of the opener page. Um, yeah, I think, you know, what I'm going to do is add one more thought to what I was saying a moment ago, which was, uh, I really do need to understand, you don't want to either, in my opinion, the, the best artists like Alex Toth or someone like David Mazzuccelli, they have both. They can just create and draw, and probably all their knowledge is in the background, their, their craft theoretical knowledge. It's in the background of their mind as they draw. And then there's other times they probably, I don't know David Mazzuccelli. I did know Alex Toth, and I know he could do this. He could analyze. He had spent tons of time thinking about what he did, why he did it, looking at other great artists that he admired, like Roy Crane, particularly Noel Sickles, um, which I'll do separate videos about. So, yeah, I'm, I'm jumping back to say that, that, that do not make the mistake of thinking that you have to be one or the other. Yes, you definitely have to be able to just create and go forward. And you don't want your, your brain beachballing with all these theories. There might be an error... Um, a time when you go into this stuff, particularly as a student, where you have a kind of cognitive dissonance, it's called, where your ideas are all a bit confused, you're not sure what to do. But if you push through that, just like with any kind of cognitive dissonance, uh, you, you come to a new land where you actually have more skill and you grasp what you're doing more clearly. And I think any of these skilled and veteran artists that are might be listening to this would agree with me and understand uh, what that's all about. Okay, so Batman Year One. Love it. Love everything about it. I don't, like I said, I don't know David Mazzuccelli, but I can see that he studied Alex Toth and he studied uh, all sorts of other great people. And that's not to take away from him. He's got his own style, his own accomplishment. Uh, but I can see that he understands exactly what he's doing and why, why, why he's doing it. So this is the Batman Year One graphic novel. And uh, so many great pages and things I could talk about. But for some reason, one day I, I started just looking at this. One of those idle moments. Page two. I'll hold it up. And uh, this is the color version. But I'm going to go over the black and white version because it's easier to see. And I've made all kinds of notes to myself and draw overs to understand what people that I admire are doing. I've done them for myself on my computer. But now I'm going to print out some of them and show them. Got too many video ideas, people. Anyway, so this is page two of Batman Year One. And what I've done is, okay, put that away. I've uh, printed out on the left here is my 
printout of just the raw art that I found, I think, on Heritage auction site or something, and I printed it out. And um, I'll try and zoom in on some of this to make it a bit clearer, but let's just see if I can do that. And uh, on the right here, I'm just pausing to check my framing. Yeah. Um, on the right is, I've got two different analyses to show you of this page. And uh, the first is from the standpoint of perspective tricks and why he's choosing the camera angles. So I'm going to talk about it. Actually, what I think I'll do is, uh, I don't know if I can show all three. Um, see, I'm trying to, I, I didn't want to do this with a edited video. I want to do this like straight ahead. And uh, hopefully you can still see the page. I'm going to show you. See, here on the right is the page without my notes. And here's my notes to myself. And I'm going to recreate it. So, yeah, you can see it well enough in the video. It's a bit grayed out, but I'll go back and forth if I want to actually draw on top again. It's an establishing shot. Shot one here. It's just like in any great story, you need to orient the reader. Where are we? And so, of course, you have this great moody shot of the elevated train, Gotham City, the date, and then Gotham City, the captions. And it, what, what you see here, and these are the notes I've made to myself, is study the shot sequence. It's like a great director. It's like he's making a movie on paper. So panel one <clears throat> is an upshot. The line I've drawn here is the horizon line where the, the camera would be placed. And so you're looking up at the train. So panel one, we start with an establishing shot that is an upshot. And I make a note that um, what's a clever trick he did here. And I would love to talk to him, see if he did this like in full knowing or if he did it um, just instinctively. But the horizon line here, which is along this, the lines of that, it's like the perspective horizon line for the second panel here. So you see how these lines converge these lines uh, on the sides of the train. So now we're suddenly going from outside to an interior shot, and you can just picture the camera drifting in slowly, and you've got um, Commissioner Gordon over here, and he's centered under the, I didn't make a note on my drawing, but he's centered under, almost, under the uh, vanishing point. So you see how you've got this triangle here, and it, it, I'll say this in my next analysis about the way he's, David Mazzuccelli has designed the shapes, but this takes you down and it's on the vanishing point and that takes you nicely into this. And then Gordon is just on the right here. So it's really just like a, you can just picture a dissolve in a, in a film from this train going along and then, you know, maybe we dissolve inside with a brief dissolve and we're trucking in on this and maybe tilting down a bit. So then we go to the next um, page, uh, panel, which is like a zoom in, close up. And I've got, if you look here, the camera is outside the window. He's drawn the frame of the window. So you can see that we're looking in from outside, but it's a smooth enough cut, so-called, like that's a film editing term, but it applies in comics. It's a smooth enough cut that we're basically just zooming in on his face bigger. He's changed the pose to give it some interest. So here he was, uh, yeah, it's the, 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 the text from Frank Miller is talking about Barbara's flying in. So it looks like he's checking his watch in this pose. And then here he's glancing over and kind of looking out the window. He's put his hand to his forehead. So that's giving interest. Um, and the text refers to in an airplane from above, all you'd see are the streets and buildings fool you into thinking it's civilized. And then we cut to this airplane. So my analysis over here is that uh, there's again a common vanishing point on the vertical axis that this train window is kind of going this way. And then we cut to that way and the plane like moving left to right. So I'm, I've written that it's almost like a pivot. Um, and again, I wrote here that the horizon eye level needs to two shots are, is kind of similar. So it's like the camera's kind of shifted over and it helps your eye move smoothly through this page. There's all kinds of these things that older, not that he's that old, but he 
in line with the tradition and understanding of older comics artists who really mastered the art of comic page storytelling. They knew all these things and used them. Anyway, the camera tilts over and uh, it's, like a it's like a tilt pan from one point of view and we're seeing this plane moving. So then in the last panel, um, this plane is has got Bruce Wayne inside and so we cut down and it's very nice because he left room here to isolate the um, captions, which gives them emphasis. And this is like, just like he, Bruce Wayne is in a frame. It almost shows him isolated. Again, we're, the camera's still outside in all three of these panels. So the camera's looking in the plane window. And I've written notes to myself here. Elimination of detail to focus on introduction of Bruce. Continued movement to the side of the plane. So it's like, it's like the, the plane's still flying and maybe we're, uh, we're, we're moving with it now. And again, we've kind of done another smooth truck in or zoom in, you can call it, just the way we went from panel two to panel three here. From four to five, now that it's talking about Bruce Wayne, we've, we've zoomed in and introduced him. So it's another kind of establishing shot. Uh, here's, here's Bruce Wayne inside his plane. We kind of reestablished a different thing. Um, so, uh, I've written also my notes, this is from a while ago, so I'm even reading some of this a bit cold, but camera outside also, but another close-up, the antagonists. Uh, and I guess in the story, if I haven't actually read it for a while, bad me, but um, they're antagonists in the story because I think they think that Batman's a villain. But here I've got the note, camera outside also, but another close-up, the antagonist. So he's... On one page here, Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli, by laying it out brilliantly like this, they've established the antagonist. Bruce Wayne looks a little lonely. He, he, I've written, uh, he's looking away alone and doesn't even see Gordon, so he's facing away. So this is all uh, on my Instagram art principles. I've been calling this the 2D language, two-dimensional language. It's the language which exists on a flat page and is the delight of comics and comic book storytelling and other forms of illustration. But it's it's a, a symbolic language that, that there's a ton to learn about. It's not just about drawing and tracing forms and, and, and doing very fussy, exact drawings. That's not all there is to drawing. Drawing is a symbolic language and comics are a subset or another form of that. Now what I'm gonna do is talk about, so I don't make this too long, I'm gonna talk about it, um, uh, where am I at? 12 minutes. I'm going to talk about eye paths. And this is composition. So uh, what we have here is, this is another layer I did on my computer in Photoshop just to, to study and not mix them up. Um, and I just printed this out with the, the art in grey. But uh, when I looked at this, I can see an artist that understands they're not just drawing single pictures that stand alone. The entire page is a composition of itself, but then of course you have sub-compositions in each panel. So that's the challenge of a, a comics page, and it's the skill that all these older artists that I admire, like Alex Toth, Roy Crane, and so many others, they understood the art of composition. And a large part of the art of composition is eye pass. And what that means is you're creating a flow through the page so that the reader follows intentionally what you've intentionally put there it's not just accidental and it's not just like quote looking cool you are trying to direct and channel the viewer's eye so that they absorb the information in the proper sequence and when a, in a comic what's key is that they move through the page and that they read the things in sequence as you wish and uh, that would mean alternating, usually alternating, between the words and the pictures so that they absorb in the right sequence. And what it does is it makes one long line through the page. If you study great old pages of comic art, there's what you call an I call an eye path through the whole page. That's like a long line of like caption, balloon, image, or it might go image, image. You know, if it's silent, image, image, and then, and then oh, here's a balloon. But it's controlled. What you sometimes or often find in modern comics is because the different tasks have been broken up and uh, not done on the page by one person who understands this, uh, you get art done by one person who may or may not understand iPad, but then a letterer comes on and some of them understand it, but some of them don't. And so they just put 
like lettering and word balloons and captions, God knows where, and it just destroys the flow of the page. So like here, we've got January 4th, got some th three panels that form a line. Uh, they're the captions, I should say. And it takes you in, and then he directs you back to the train. Now, I don't know if the photo or reference he used was like this, but he obviously, David Mazzuccelli, I understood. I've got to get, you know, back, looking back at this train, and then, you know, you're going to be thinking of uh, probably like in this train compartment, like I said in my earlier part, Commissioner Gordon's inside there. So then he's designed it, as I said earlier, that the shapes flow very nicely in a complementary way. And each panel has a different feeling. It's He's not repeating himself. So this is like a main establishing shot. It flows with these eye lines into a secondary establishing shot, which is inside the compartment. That takes us to three captions in a row. And then um, you see how this line of Gordon's hand, it works with this flow. But then, of course, you go back over, you're attracted to read these two captions very clearly. Then you're going to go to the next, you're going to go down through there, over. The plane wing helps you get your eye transition to these two panels. And then uh, we have a caption here, which attracts you down there. And then you're going to, of course, see Bruce Wayne. And you're going to, of course, read these because they're isolated. So he hasn't put all kinds of other distracting bits and noodly pieces in there. Um, this has all been designed with a conscious intent and a discipline. And, uh, you know, I can't say I've always done that in my art. I tried to. And it's very challenging. I mean... Not other than I think Alex Toth wrote me in one of his postcards, and I learned this for myself, that comic book art and comics is incredibly challenging because you're dealing with all these different disciplines at once. You're dealing with shots and composition and acting, and you, you know, you, you're um, dealing with perspective and anatomy and set design and, you know, on and on. So you, it's like you're making a film on paper and you have to struggle with all the elements of filmmaking and comics. Now, of course, that's not meant to be dispiriting, but uh, it's it's meant to just understand that it, it is a big challenge. So there you go. That's my first uh, art analysis of David Mazzuccelli. I've got lots more of these I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share. And uh, thank you for listening and see you in the next one.